Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. There's greatness in you. You've proved that without a doubt. And whether you've destroyed the bandits for us or for your own ends, it matters not at all. You've given us back our home and our future. You say the Lords of Larceny wore these around their necks? These artifacts and that ancient gateway to the Northwest crafted by the same hands, I'd venture. Vowel hands. And it appears the brigands' trinkets could form a single whole. Give me a moment with them. I used to be good at this sort of thing. Now, this one seems to fit neatly against here. And this third one, well, it looks like it... I'm so sorry, my friend. Are you well? Yes, you are apparently intact. Remarkable, considering... For the barest moment there, you were something altogether different. I'm not afraid to admit it. A rather unnerving version of yourself. If I were you, I'd dispense with that artifact down the deepest, darkest hole that I could find. The end of learning is the beginning of death. This old mind shall remember what it... The Baleful Gem and Malagaro Spike. I'd wager these two grotesqueries were made for each other. A marriage born in darkness. My advice? Send them to their wedding bed. The riverbed. That ancient gateway to the northwest. It's a peculiar thing. Not of the Eternal Empire. It could be Val in origin. A culture I've seen mentioned here and there in some of the most antique of texts. It is the Val who began the use of virtue gems well before our Imperial ancestors. Little else is known about them. If only I had my old museum archives, I could have given you a more tempered theory. Fare you well. Piety would have concurred with Eremia's theory about that northwestern ruin. The Val were a powerful civilization predating even the Eternal Empire, and Piety very much wanted to see what toys the Val might have left for her to play with behind those stone doors. Yet we couldn't budge them, not with that giant of a tree holding them fast in her roots. You now carry a cure to that problem, or rather a useful illness. Use the spike to inject the Baleful Gem's Calibric Extantia into the roots, one day soon, Piety will find her way into that ruin. You need to get there first. Go with courage. My help is yours. Viper eats monkey. Monkey eats viper. The forest is hurt, confused. It fights with itself. There is no peace for us in this war. Stay true to you. Journey. That spear. Yes, that is my best spear. The one I stuck in eye of old Mother Eitlek. I think you keep it now. Let the beasts and bandits fear you even more. It is my gift to you, from one hero to another. Wait, no, you need more than just spear and happy words for this great deed. You kill Mother of all eight legs. You need prize. Here, when I found my spear in the forest, I found these too. You will take, yes? Now, Deathmark is really good for our minions. Faster casting is also good. Minion speed is also good. pass to the sea is open. You are a legend that lives, Exile. A 
How can I help? Welcome. How be you, exile? Speak! Their skin makes good boots. Their spit makes painful death. You are a hunter of man. Today you have hunted bandits. Tomorrow, when you are restless, Will you hunt us? You should go. Find another hunting ground. Leave us in peace. Going? Now, before we continue, I need to tell you something really important. When you press left click on your spell, you have this option, always attack without moving. So what does this mean? If we want to flame dash, with this option turned on, our character will always flame dash. But if this option is turned off, and if we click really far away. As you can see, first our character will start to run and then he will flame dash. So basically the character will try to flame dash at the position we clicked. While with this option turned on, our character will instantly flame dash. Now this option is really good if you want your character to react really fast. Now, if you want to target some dead corpse, you need to hold A on your keyboard. Now, this spell called Desecrate will only spawn the dead bodies of enemies that are available on this map. It's not gonna spawn the random dead bodies that are available on other maps. When I'm ready, and not before. So now with this spell called Death Mark, we can tell all our flying weapons to focus on one target. And they will also deal more damage when commanded.
How fascinating. Crop is ready. Return to the garden. and not before. Mm -hmm. A stranger like no other faced the wall of the Umbra, opened a pass in a sorry land, gave some hope to a sorry band of exiles and death so castaways, a chance at life on a brand new day. There, thought you deserve one of my finest poems, written to commemorate such a mighty feat. Oh, ain't this been keeping it for a very special occasion. Consider yourself just such an occasion. Made any progress? Some have dared hope for a better life beyond Prisoner's Gate. Not me. My place is here, easing the suffering of exile as best I can. Be well. Still alive, huh? You found a way to bring down Chevron's barricade. <laughs> it's at times like these I recall I'm a man of action, not words. Should we encounter each other in the forest, the roast bores on me, my friend. Farewell. Fate awaits you. Not right now. Nothing like this happens until you are here. Bring back the light, or you will find my spear in your throat. Exile. You disappear into that vile ruin, and now the sky, the light, the very land limps as a leper. Somehow, whether through deliberate act or accident, you've caused this. Now we all suffer your consequences. Different good, different bad. We now know upon which side the coin has fallen. 
The Fell Shrine is a shadow of what was once good in Rin. You've put an end to old Lorata. Twisted of heart and mind were the men who made that gem and that implement of black surgery. And what of the one who chooses to wield their creations? Of course, I wish to know the secrets locked in that tomb, but not at the cost of such a grand old life. The end of learning is the beginning of... What has happened? Did the world not rise from its sleep? How do we wake it up? Please, what should we do? There's one bright spot in this darkness you've released. At least it was you who did it, and you can undo it, I know it. Had it been piety, we'd likely never see the sun again. Keep your... I dreamed this. A vast creature. A thing of shadow. I saw it escape from a black prison and climb a man-crafted mountain, drifting up its four sheer sides like the mist that reaches for the clouds. It gathered at the peak of that mountain and ate the heart from the sun. You smell of that black mist and something else. Guilt. That is it, yes. Guilt is a strong illness. It gnaws at the spirit until there is nothing left, until you are one of the walking corpses. You want a cure? Find the man-crafted mountain, send the shadow home, and tell the monster to take your guilt with it. Lorata is dead. It is not news to me. The forest screams its grief. You need not carry the blame. This was Lorata's will. I do not question why she allowed you to end her days. I keep her in my dreams, where she might still help us. Be kind if you can. For all of her strange ways, I've learned not to discount Gina's more vivid dreams. She's in tune with this land in ways I find difficult to comprehend. As to this man-crafted mountain she describes, I have seen only one structure of its like. Stumbled across sketches in the Theopolis archives, a piece of Val engineering, pyramidal in architecture. According to those documents, the pyramid lies north of the Frisian forest, buried beneath the mantle upon which San rests. I have no idea whether it still exists, or ever existed for that matter. Still, considering the current circumstances, there isn't much to lose in the search, is there? Fare you well. What? What would you like? Yes. Greetings. Hello. A man-crafted mountain of four sheer sides. That's a pyramid. Val architecture. I've covered a lot of the countryside with piety and seen nothing like that. Still, history is in the habit of burying its dead. Perhaps you could try looking down instead of up. Till next time, shall we keep... Now, there is no reason for us to go here, but I'm gonna go there. You can just skip this map completely.
I'm ready, and not before. Gather them quickly. A harvest is ready. Okay, so this means that we found one hideout that we can unlock. So once you find a hideout, all you have to do is just kill all enemies inside it. And then you will unlock that hideout. Now for me nothing happens because I already have this one. When I'm ready and not
Okay, so we just found a crafting recipe. We can use this recipe later to enchant our items. In fact, I could show you that right away. So on waypoint, to the bottom right, we can click to travel to our hideout. Now this is my hideout, the one that I have currently selected. Here I have my stash. The one that you can find in every town. I have a seed stockpile. The one that you can find in Sacred Grove. Welcome. I have this lady Hello. here, this lady. All right. I've taken the liberty of performing a few tests. There are a few magical modifications the Transmucia device can make that are safe every time. Try enhancing a piece of equipment now. Let's see if my results hold. Go with courage. So she's telling us about this crafting bench. And here we can enchant our gear. As you can see, we have prefixes, suffixes. So let's see, what should we enchant? Now, the game tells us that this item doesn't have any space for mods. That's because, I already told you, this is a magic item. And magic items can only have two modifiers. One prefix and one suffix. So we need... a yellow item, actually. And on this one, we can put only these stats at the moment. Now, down here, we have all the stats that we haven't unlocked. And when you hover over them, the game will tell you where you can find these crafting recipes. Greetings. The Blackguard Girl? Aina hates Blackguards. But I love Helena. She is great at finding places to hide. <laughs> I like to try to find her, and then I hide and wait for her to find me. And she never can. <laughs> Always I win. Now that I think about it, I do not think she knows to look for me. Maybe next time I should tell her before I hide. Oh, yes, the Revenant. Well, I love her. She reminds Aina of the great feathered Sakawal. I like to sneak up behind her as if she was Sakawal and I were Aina. And I try to pounce like Aina would pounce. Every time she steps out of the way and I fall on the ground like a silly Aina. <laughs> Even when I am as quiet as Dead Cat. <laughs> How does she do it? Goodbye. Welcome. Greetings. I retrieved the Transmucia device from the Chamber of Sins, and I believe I can rig it to imbue equipment with magical modifications. This may involve minor meddling with dark forces we don't understand, but we'll have to take that risk. Rayclast is a dangerous place, and we'll never get anywhere by playing it safe. As long as we treat the process scientifically and approach it methodically, we should be able to craft equipment to our needs. Journey well. By the way, I forgot to mention that each enchant requires a certain amount of currency and a certain type of currency, so it's not free. Greetings. Keep your life to your own. Now this spider here that you see, or this flying spaceship, or 
There were two more flying things in here. Those are all my pets. You can just let your pets do whatever they want in your hideout. Or you can take them just to follow you. They don't do anything, they just follow you. Hello. Malachi himself gave this Transmucia device to Malagaro. It makes me incredibly uncomfortable to think about the horrors that it helped bring into being. But I must remind myself that science is not responsible for what happened in the Chamber of Sins. Science provides tools for mankind to manipulate the world. It is up to each of us to choose to do good or evil with the power so provided. Malagaro was the evil responsible, and Malachi before him. Together, you and I are going to start using this device to undo the damage they did. While you're out there, try to remain vigilant for other possible locations for hideouts. The Blackguards never give up, and they may eventually stray close to this place. I want to have a backup location ready to go in the event we need to make a quick exit. I was no wonder child back in Aureus, but I prided myself on what junior accomplishments I managed to put together within the strict set of allowed sciences. Archaeology was my specialty, and Dominus and his ilk had an uncommon fascination with artifacts from the past. And I... I was told I was crucial, that I was important, because I could tell whether an artifact was truly vile simply by running my hand along faded stone patterns. I may have had a head slightly too big for my shoulders. When the Ebony Legion made available an archaeologist position on their expedition to Rayclast, and nobody volunteered, I thought my colleagues were all simply afraid of continental dangers. No. They knew better. None were allowed to speak it openly, but they knew. I didn't find out what kind of society I was truly a part of until I saw Piety's aspirations. I studied the Val. I knew all about their downfall, or at least our Templar-twisted perception of it. Piety's ocean of slaughter. The Val called their hubris the apex of sacrifice. The Eternal Empire called theirs the Purity Rebellion. We call ours the Temple of Lunaris. And I know nothing, Exile. Nothing at all. Save that we are doomed to repeat the mistakes of the past unless we learn the hard way. Farewell. Greetings. When I first met him, I underestimated Einhar. Coming from the poorest of Ezemites, themselves already a battered people in this region of the world, Einhar struck me as someone who could contribute brawn to our cause, but not much else. How wrong I was. If anyone can decipher the dark design afflicting the creatures of Rayclast, it's him. I've been looking for the source of all this, an equation or overall pattern, but he's unknowingly taken an empirical approach. By learning about and understanding every single corrupted animal and the energies their blood contains, he's done more to advance our understanding of the problem than I could ever have done myself. One day, he may even solve the symptoms of corruption without ever understanding the root cause. Make no mistake, Exile, that's impressive. A humanistic brute force approach to a cosmic problem. I find Navali's state of existence curious. She is present, sapient, and capable of self-directed action. In a land where the dead continually rise as mindless monsters intent on nothing but destruction, Navali stands as a stark outlier. I suspect that she is trustworthy, only because of some Kardui essence that still remains from her life before carrying with it honor, duty, and respect. Were it piety or dominus returning in such a form, the consequences would be unthinkable. Go with courage. Now we can customize everything in our hideout by clicking here and then edit. So we can edit 
any object that we have in our hideout. For example, let's edit our crafting bench. We can scroll up and down to change its looks. We can add or remove decorations. For example, let's see. I have this. We can rotate decorations by pressing R on the keyboard. By pressing delete, we can just remove them. You can also export your hideout and give it to other people who like it, or you can also import other people's hideouts. Every hideout has a default music, and you can change the music by purchasing a hideout music player. Now, if you want to import somebody else's hideout, you need to make sure that you own that type of hideout that you want to import. Now, you can buy many more decorations from the people who live in your hideout. And later, when we progress through the game, we will get more NPCs in our hideout. And that's basically it. I'm ready, and not before. is short. Deal with it.
Now take a look at this totem and how it's glowing. That same glow is also below enemy's feet. This totem prevents enemies from dying, so first we need to kill the totem. When I'm ready and not before. when I'm ready and not before.
pretty. I think we could have been friends. Nice, we got our first four sockets item. And from this point, we can get items that have four sockets. Humanity has one redeeming trait. We learn from our mistakes. You certainly gave us a scare for a bit there, but the damage doesn't seem to have been lasting. Thank you for doing the right thing. Fare you well. You have made peace with our land. For now, my spear is lowered. Return if you must. I am not surprised. I saw you, in my slumber, drive the darkness away. I am sorry that I did not tell you before. What I see is only what might happen, and I did not want to fill you with more confidence than would have been good for you. Yes? Thank you for returning our reality to us. I think we've all had a glimpse of what could happen if Piety tries to harness the power of the Val for her own ends. Farewell. I knew this strangeness would pass. Silk does not run from such things. I stand, I guard, when others shiver and shake. Hello. And we will continue this in the next episode. So if you liked this one, give it a like, dislike if you think it sucked, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.